Good morning dear friends and greetings to all of you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is a new week and this is another new day and the Lord's faithfulness has brought us all together into this day and he also has given us everything needed that we may enjoy life by glorifying him and so may the Holy Spirit help all of us to live a life that is pleasing to God. Today's our meditation is about worship. The Bible makes it very clear that there is a worship not acceptable to God and there is a worship that is acceptable to God. And so I'm going to talk about what is acceptable worship. And I want to read from Genesis chapter 4 uh, verses 6 and seven. This is about the first two children born to Adam and Eve, Ab uh, Cain and Abel. It is said about them, both of them took an offering to the Lord. And the Bible says here, God was pleased with the offering of Abel and commended him. And uh, he did not uh, accept very well the offering that Cain offered and the reason also is said there. So let me read to you. Uh, then the Lord said to Cain, it is because Cain got so upset and angry because God accepted his brother's uh, offering and uh, did not accept uh, his offering. So over that he felt so angry with God and probably angry with his own brother Cain. And uh, then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must master it. When you read this passage, the first question comes to mind is, why did God, while accepting the offering of Abel, uh, did not accept Cain's offering? <clears throat> After all, they both brought from what each of them had. Now Abel was a shepherd, and so he brought a sheep from among his hundreds of sheep. And uh, Cain was a farmer, so he brought uh, some farm product. And so what was wrong with that? My friend, the truth is, when you read this passage, you clearly understand one truth here. God did not reject or deny Cain. We need to understand God's nature. God being what he is, could not accept any offering which did not uh, meet his requirements. Now keep that thing in mind. Now God told very clearly what he should do in verse 7. What he should do. It is not that uh, Cain was ignorant of what God requires. But he simply didn't want to do it. This counsel of God um, gave him the opportunity to do the right way, which was acceptable to God. Because God said, God told when he was very angry, God told him uh, very clearly what he should do. And uh, but what he did, instead of doing what uh, told him to do, he went out and killed or murdered his brother Abel. And uh, that is the problem. He rejected God's way. Genesis 4, 6. You read it and you will understand. Instead, he went out from the presence of God and murdered his brother Abel. 
Now God kept the door open to Cain. And God also warned him what sin was trying to do with him. I want you to take note of this truth. Sin was trying to have Cain in its grip, in his hold. And my friends, the power of a sin greater than your power. But by the grace of God, you have been given the, uh, the authority to come against sin's power and overcome and get out of God's grip. That is something that God has enabled you to do. And uh, sin was trying to have uh, Cain in its hold. And verse 7, the first part gives us a very important principle. God says, my offering shows what I am within. I say it again, my offering, anything that I offer to God shows the condition of my heart, what I am truly in my heart within. God said, if you offer the right thing, will you not be accepted? And so if God had to say that, God must have certainly made clear to Cain what is the right thing to do. And he must have understood what God is demanding from verse 6. To accept my offering is equal to accepting me as far as God is concerned. And accepting my offering is equal to accepting myself. And my gift reveals my heart. You see, that is very, very obvious. The what gift you give to your best friend shows your heart or to anybody. See, Abel, according to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4, says, Abel chose the best from among his sheep and probably from among hundreds of sheep. He went through them all and chose the best that he could find from among these sheep. He must have spent little time to go through all of them and then check every sheep he picked up and then among them the best he found and he brought it to God and offered to him. Compare this with a, a, with a, a, with a, a husband and wife team in Acts chapter 5. Their names were Ananias and Sapphira. They also brought a, an offering to the Lord. But God uh, not only rejected their offering, but uh, cut them off from the, uh, from the community of God's people immediately. Now that kind of immediate judgment we don't often see, but there is a principle involved there. You must keep it in mind. When you bring an offering to the Lord, always remember He examines your heart and the motive and intentions of your heart before he looked at your offering because he wants to know the intention of your heart and the motive of your heart we can do a lot of ministries we can preach and we can become a popular pastor and or evangelist and yet at the end when the judgment day come, many of such people are going to be rejected by God. You know why? 
because they did it all not for the glory and honor of God alone but they had some very selfish motive they want to gain fame and name and money as the bible makes it very clear that many take up ministry as a means of gain my friends we can never hide anything from our god nothing is hidden from he knows the innermost thoughts of our heart what is lying down at the bottom of our heart please remember that and when this young couple brought their offering to god hypocrisy is something god cannot stand and what we when you study that passage in acts chapter 5 what you will notice is their hypocritical attitude in bringing their money they brought a, a big amount of money and placed it at the apostles feet and uh, the holy spirit immediately revealed to peter that they are thief their intentions are not good they wanted to appear before the crowd as the one who gives everything to god without to keeping anything for them and so immediately peter asked is it all the money you have received by, from the sale of your property and uh, first the husband said yes the wife was not there at that time with him and uh, immediately peter said you are not lying to a man you are lying to the holy spirit and that's to god and hearing that he fell down and died and after about 3 hours mrs came and not knowing what happened to her husband and to her also peter asked the same question and she also gave the same answer and so it seems that both husband and wife consulted and talked together and thus they separated a good amount from that total amount and kept it for themselves and yet they wanted to appear in public as great righteous people who are concerned about the needs of god's people and god's work and as if it were, they were giving uh, the, the whole amount in competition with the barnabas probably but the holy spirit told her the same thing and she also fell immediately and died such immediate judgment you and i may not experience today but always remember god never forgets the principles that he taught us see what you do what offering you bring God is not looking at that offering first to begin with. He is looking right into your heart and discover your motive, your intention. What is worship that is acceptable to God? Our hearts have to be completely cleaned of all wrong motives and We need to possess a heart that is so sincere. Our hearts have to be completely cleaned of all wrong motives. And remember, you and your offering are the same to God. When God accepts your offering, it is equal to accepting you and uh, if you are rejected by god it is equal to rejecting any offering you may bring according to john chapter 4 verse 24 the worship has to be in spirit and in truth and in the beauty of holiness place of worship is irrelevant in the new testament it doesn't matter where you worship under your own roof or outside under a tree 
or by the seashore or anywhere else it doesn't have to be a cathedral with curtains and pipe organs etc and as i said place is irrelevant as far as worship is concerned in the new testament see god separated a place of worship and made worship a matter of your heart that is the new testament worship that is acceptable if your heart is clean if your heart contains a very clean conscience and if your heart is uh, not filled with wrong motives and desires and you are not hypocritical in bringing your worship and your offerings unto god he accept them that means he has accepted you and anything other than this god sees your heart and my friends your worship your prayers your offerings are not acceptable to god that is why jesus in his teaching mount and on sermon he said when you bring your offering to god and you kneel down at the altar and offer your offerings and suddenly you remember that there is someone who has something against you you leave your offering at the altar and go back and be reconciled and by forgiving that person and asking him to forgive you then you come back and offer your offerings it will be accepted you see my friends that is the difference between worship that is acceptable and worship that is not acceptable keep this thing in mind in your own personal life let it be true worship and teach others your children your family your friends and if you are a minister of the gospel remember teach this to your congregation though so that our churches will be filled with sincere heart and worship from a sincere heart that god will accept because god wants worship more than anything else so be a true worshiper of god father we have learned today what is the kind of worship that is acceptable to you and what is not acceptable to you understand in this truth may none of us be rejected by you because accepting my offering my worship is equal to accepting me and i want my god to accept me that is my greatest desire May your holy spirit lead us teach us use us thank you in jesus name amen my friend this is a good day to live for god and have a good and wonderful day god bless you